Today on Alex and Autos, we are finally shooting the video you have been asking for, and that is the video on Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And we're taking a look at the Uvo infotainment system that is brand new in the 2016 Kia Optima. Now we do expect to see this system spreading its way across the Kia lineup very soon. Now in order to demo this system, I have a Google Nexus 5 phone and I also have an Apple iPhone 6 right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Android Auto first. Android Auto is activated automatically when you plug in an Android phone and you'll notice it's now right over here. We can just select that option from this main screen and instantly we're inside Android Auto. Now because we are in a demo unit, we're not actually in a real car, we will have a constant pop-up showing up that says the battery is discharging. Now that we're on this main Android Auto screen, you'll notice that we have some icons across the bottom. We have a navigation option here that takes us straight to the Google Maps interface. Now the interesting thing about both Apple and Android's integration here is that we are not using the GPS that's integrated inside this Nexus 5 phone. This is actually using the GPS unit that is integrated into the vehicle and therefore gets a better and more accurate signal. And that's why even though right now I'm in Colorado, this particular system thinks we're right now in a suburb of Los Angeles near I-5. Now Google Maps works very much as you would expect. We can zoom in and out, we can pinch to zoom. That is one big difference between Android Auto and Apple's CarPlay is that Apple's CarPlay does not support pinch to zoom in this particular version inside the Kia. We have a menu right up here and we can see our recent places, categories, and we can turn traffic on and off. A lot of things are done with the voice command system. So if you want to enter a destination, we simply click the voice command button up there and command it. Google, navigate me to 897 Hinkley Road in Burlingame. You'll notice that these commands, very much like the voice commands on your smartphone, are very natural, unlike the commands on the system integrated in the car. Now, of course, this system does require that you have a valid cell signal. So right now you can see this phone does have a cell signal, so it has internet access. And that is really the reason that this voice command system can be more advanced than what we see integrated into most vehicle systems. Because the vehicle has to do all that voice recognition on its own. And phones don't really do any of the voice recognition directly. They actually send your voice up to some servers that are specially designed, have a lot of processing horsepower, and then they return this voice command. Now because all this data is integrated with the smartphone and its voice command system, it will automatically assume certain things. So if for instance I ask about weather in Napa, California, and then I ask for just wineries and I don't specify an area, it's going to think that I want wineries in Napa, California. Now Apple's system doesn't go quite to that level because it could be that you don't want to know about wineries up in Napa, you're asking about wineries local. So it really depends on how you feel about those particular features. Down here on the phone interface, you'll notice we do have a phone interface right here. We can actually voice command phone dials or we can just click them right there on the device. We have a round button here that takes us back to this home screen. And you'll notice we have basically those same interfaces right there on that home screen. We have a little headphone icon right there that takes us to Google Play Music. Now there are a variety of different services that will integrate with Android Auto and CarPlay at this time, so you will see a few more options in the future. If we click up here, you'll notice that we have radio, recent activity, and playlists for that Google Audio. Now this last option that looks sort of like a speedometer allows us to return to the native key interface. So if you want to go back to this particular interface, that's how you do it. Now if we click the Media Direct Access button, you'll notice that we get this particular screen here which shows our various inputs, one of which is Android Auto because it's considered an audio input for that function. We also have the native Pandora interface which would not be using Android Auto, it would actually interface directly with the app using the vehicle's integrated system. For the CarPlay section, we are now inside a 2016 Honda Accord, and there is method to my madness. The reason that we're now inside a different vehicle than I was demonstrating Android Auto is because this is actually car agnostic now, since the display for both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are actually being generated by the smartphone itself, it doesn't matter what vehicle you're in, you get exactly the same experience. This will be probably the biggest in-car shift in infotainment in a very long time because the car manufacturer will no longer have the ability to customize this interface. The theme of the interface is very similar, although the layout is different than Android Auto. We get a home button right down here, which operates very much like the home button on your smartphone itself. If you'd like to use Siri, you can either press and hold on this button or use the car's voice command button itself. We get a signal status and a clock right here for our LTE connected smartphone. If you want to access your phone features, we do have a phone app right over there. You just click on over and you use this just like normal. You can have it show contacts, you can see recent history, etc. You can scroll around just like you would in the other system. You have access to our full keypad, to our voicemail, etc. Going back on the home screen, you'll notice that we have music very prominently here. And of course, because this is an Apple device, 
this really is your iPod interface. In general, users of Apple iPhones tend to have a much more extensive media library on their device than you find on most Android devices. That's just likely because Apple has been at that music thing longer and they've really integrated it with all of their devices. Now we still have the ability to access Apple's radio service right there. These are streaming channels. But we also have direct access to our playlists, artists, songs, and more in the system. You can also click on over to what's now playing. We get our usual abilities to heart the song. We can shuffle, we can repeat, those sorts of things onto that interface, and we can track forward and backward as you can see right there. Going right back to the home screen, you'll notice that we also have a mapping interface right here. This is Apple Maps, of course, all being generated by your smartphone. And a key difference between this and Android Auto is that we don't have the ability to pinch and zoom on this particular screen for some reason. Now, if we look closely, you'll notice that when we switched over to the map interface, the iPhone moved over to the map app as well. So if I click the home button right over here, you notice that the smartphone does the same thing. If I click over to music, this will load the music app. This particular functionality is more or less unique to the iPhone. The Android handles that in a slightly different fashion. Android Auto and CarPlay are constantly updating. This is the first version of the software and every time you update your smartphone you will be basically getting a new version of this software and features and functions are likely to expand and change very rapidly. Entering a destination in the system is very easy. Of course this is designed to use the voice commands for pretty much everything. So you can see your previous searches right there. You can hit that search button and start a new search. You do have an option for a keyboard right over here or you can use the voice command. This is obviously a free text search because it operates very much like Apple Maps or the Google Map product. The mapping information is honestly very similar. If you like Apple Maps, you'll like this product. If you like Google Maps, you'll probably like Android Auto a little bit better. They both display traffic information delivered over the data services on your phone. The other important thing is just like Android Auto, this system is using the GPS sensor that is built into the vehicle, not the one that's built into the phone. Going back over to the home screen on the messages tab, this is where you will obviously see text messages. You can have it show text messages. You can have it write text messages. You can also click this little button right over here and start like creating a new message. It'll ask you who you want to text message to right there with the voice commands. Again, everything is very voice command driven. Now playing will take you right over to the current music selection on that screen. And the option right over here for Honda will take you back to the car's own native interface, just like we saw on the Android Auto system. Very much like the Kia and Hyundai systems, we just click right back to Apple CarPlay to go back to the interface being driven by the smartphone. We also have podcasts, audiobooks, which work very similar there. And then we have the Pandora app option here as well. Now at this time, I'm unable to directly comment on this, but according to Honda, they do expect more apps to be available for the iPhone than the Android, at least initially. The reason for that is simply there are more iPhones that currently support CarPlay than Androids on the market. And we're talking physical number of handsets actually shipped at this time that currently support this input method. So it seems to be a little bit more of a drive there on the Apple side. Overall, however, like every other app that's out there on the market, you will probably see apps for both platforms coming up very soon. Very much like Android Auto, we can do a number of things with the voice commands. Siri, what's the weather like? Today, the temperature will range between 52 degrees and 70 degrees. Hmm, the weather looks pretty mixed tomorrow through November 6, 2015, with temperatures ranging from 46 degrees to 81 degrees. You can also do things like... Siri, where can I find some cat food? Searching. One possibility is Scotts Valley Feed on Scotts Valley Drive in Scotts Valley. Let me know if I should call one of them or get directions for you. Very much like Android Auto, you can scroll along the list, you can click on the option if you want directions, or you can have the system actually give you directions. You can see multiple routes and see which way you'd like to go. One nice touch in this system is that if we accidentally click the wrong button like that home button and then we go back to the Maps app, it actually remembers what you were doing. And you don't find that in a lot of built-in car systems. So in that way, this is definitely superior than most built-in car nav Scott systems. Valley. Once we started that route, you get the directions like you would expect on an Apple device. It is slightly different, of course, right here on the car, but we have the same basic instructions. We can repeat the voice instruction, get the detailed view, we can end the route, etc. Overall, I do prefer the way CarPlay looks on the screen. I think that this particular interface method is a little bit more pleasing to my eye than the Google method. However, I have to say that the Google Maps view is a little bit more attractive, both in the ability to pinch and zoom and just the general look of the maps I do find a little bit more pleasing over there on the Android platform.
Now the experience is a little bit more mixed on Android Auto because if you have a smartphone with the latest Google operating system but a relatively slow processor, then your experience on the system will be very different than a Google phone with a faster processor. That's going to be a little bit less obvious over on the Apple side simply because Apple controls all the hardware and they're all going to be quite consistent in terms of their interaction and speeds. Both systems have the same limitations, namely your carrier. So you can see right now we're in an area where I only have two bars on my LTE smartphone. If I were in an area where there were no bars, obviously this system wouldn't really function the same. And that's because a lot of this is being driven over the cellular data network. Mapping, your message support, voice commands, etc. Those are all being driven off of the data network. The other main takeaway here again is that this interface is obviously specific to the phone, not specific to the vehicle. So this is exactly the same experience you're going to get in a brand new Volvo XC90 when they come out with their Apple CarPlay support over there in the Hyundai Sonata and the Kia Optima, as well as a wide variety of other vehicles out there that are starting to pick up this kind of support. The only real area where vehicle systems will differentiate themselves if I zoom out here will be for instance in this upper display in the Honda Accord. Because if I take this camera off its tripod for a very brief moment here, then you'll notice on this upper display, we're actually getting some Apple CarPlay information right there on that secondary display. That's really gonna be the only thing that you're going to see different from these systems, one vehicle to the other. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes. And this has been our quick look at Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Be sure and check out the complete review on the 2016 Kia Optima as well as the 2016 Honda Accord coming up very soon. I'll see you next week.